it's a lot more complicated than we might think. Those movies aren't just showing up on your TV. There is an incredible amount of work for Netflix to serve its 167 million customers across 200 countries, serving over 165 million hours of content every single day. And so we're gonna talk Netflix is an incredible company in the way that it's changed the way that our culture has learned to consume media. We went from having to go buy a DVD from Blockbuster, bring it home and watch it, then return it the next day and worry about late fees to expecting a constant stream of great movies to our TV to watch whenever we want without commercials. Now I'll admit not every one of the movie suggestions are great. I know my wife and I struggle to find a good movie on there a lot of times, but nonetheless they have changed the game on how we consume content and it's a lot more complicated than we might think. Those movies aren't just showing up on your TV. There is an incredible amount of work for Netflix to serve its 167 million customers across 200 countries serving over 165 million hours of content every single day. And so we're gonna talk about how that's possible and how only through the cloud Netflix has achieved such a massive feat. We can think of Netflix's infrastructure as being split up into three parts. You have the client, the backend, and the CDN. More on the CDN later. The client is what you're seeing on your screen. So whether that's your TV, your computer, your phone, your Xbox, etc. That is your client and when you see stuff popping up, that's what's going on there. And now the back end is everything that is getting delivered to your client and it's all the information and lots more that will go into depth. All right, let's talk about the back end. So in 2008, Netflix experienced a three day outage of its two data centers. This was unacceptable for them, and as they were scaling, they knew that they were only gonna experience more of these. So Netflix ended up looking for a better solution. Now, this was right about the time when AWS was starting to come uh, into existence, they were starting to grow, and, and this was one of these serendipitous things for Netflix where what they were trying to do perfectly lined up with what the technology of the day had. Netflix wasn't the first company to try streaming video, but they came in at this time right when they were starting to scale up their business. You know, they made a mistake with the data center, but they weren't so far in, they couldn't go back. And so they were able to pivot and leverage the cloud like other companies didn't do at the time. And they made a gamble on AWS. They were able to work with them to take the heavy lifting of data centers off of Netflix and bring it to AWS, which allowed them to focus on the things that would differentiate Netflix. And so the biggest draws for Netflix to switch over to AWS was that reliability. They would not have to maintain their own data centers and they could also have multi-region failover. If one whole data center was to go down for AWS, it would automatically switch over to another AWS data center. And so the, the end user would never know that one of their data centers was down, like in that 2008 three-day crisis. The other big draw is cost savings. You can imagine that owning your own data center is really expensive. And the beautiful thing is that when they tapped into AWS, they only had to pay for what they used, which allowed them to scale up during the spikes and not pay for extra computing space when they weren't using it. Let's talk about what the backend actually means for Netflix. I'm gonna talk about a couple examples. This is not comprehensive, but we'll give a little peek into how Netflix is using the AWS cloud for their business applications. So one of the really important things for them is logging all of the computers that they have to make sure that there aren't any errors going on. And so you have these hundreds and thousands of EC2 instances that are being spun up to do whatever sort of business application uh, that's needed. And each of these is constantly reporting back data of the health of the computer. And so Netflix uses Kinesis streams to process all of this data. Kinesis is an AWS product uh, service and what it's doing is 
they're able to process all of the log data, bring it in, and they're able to determine when there's a computer that's not healthy and take appropriate actions on that. And this is uh, just one of the many things that they do to make sure that their infrastructure is operating at, at a healthy level. Another really cool thing that they do is customized uh, video art on your movies. And so Netflix is constantly collecting information about you. It's collecting what kind of movies you like, what actors you like, what you click on. And it's using these things uh, to actually change the type the cover picture of the movie that you see and so there's an example of Stranger Things where they have multiple different titles of Stranger Things and depending on what you're interested in they're going to show you that title and this is all done through processing all of that data that is being collected on you in the cloud to then provide that suggestion back to you to give you ultimately the best viewing experience. Uh, there's just a couple examples of many that Netflix uses the back end in the cloud to uh, make their video streaming service better for you. The last part of Netflix's infrastructure is the CDN. CDN stands for Content Delivery Network, and you can think of it as everything that happens after you hit play. So the CDN is not part of AWS or the cloud, but it works interconnected with it. So what was happening back in the day with Netflix is they were using a very large amount of internet bandwidth to stream all of the videos. In 2018, they were using upwards of 15% of all internet bandwidth in the world. That is uh, unheard of, that's a massive amount. And so they needed to figure out how to lighten the load on all of the internet service providers. And so what they did was they started the Open Connect initiative. And this was an idea where they would take their own computers and they would put them inside of the internet service providers data centers. And that those would be specifically to cache and store videos for Netflix. And this was revolutionary on a lot of fronts because one, Netflix didn't have to build out their own data centers in order to have the perks of their own data centers. Uh, this is something no one else had done before. And they were literally putting their hardware inside of the internet service providers data centers. ISP would be like Comcast if you get your internet from them. And so you might think, well, why would they let them do that? And it was because these companies like Comcast had so much traffic going through because of Netflix that if they didn't cooperate with Netflix to lighten the load, they would have had to spend a lot more money to build out their infrastructure. And so it ended up being mutually beneficial in the long run. The idea of how these things work is that if you can store the video, let's say you're going to watch Stranger Things, if you can store that as close to the person who's going to watch it as possible, the better. One, it's going to be faster for them, but you also don't have to carry that large amount of video data across the whole internet backbone. You can stay within the uh, internet service provider's data center and just go straight to the user. Um, and so this really lightens the load on the whole internet infrastructure and, and provides for a faster experience for the user. How this works is it's not like Netflix is able to put their whole entire video library onto these Open Connect OCAs, Open Connect applications, which are the, what the servers are called. What they do is they use uh, predictive technology to try to take a guess at what you're gonna wanna watch and when you're gonna wanna watch it. And they will preload those videos onto the OCAs and in hopes that you will watch that one and will lighten the load on the whole infrastructure. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this as interesting as I do. Next week, we're not done with Netflix and we'll be talking more about how the client, the backend, and the CDN all work together to provide you the streaming service that we've come used to. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you next time.